Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Horse Lords as the Kangai clan or Kaganate or whatever we are. In our last episode we won another war against our former neighbours over here who are now wiped out. We took their last county. We were able to declare another war more quickly than usual thanks to their leader conveniently dying, so that was very useful. And we are now at war with our southern neighbours here. We're going to take a county from them, so let's unpause and continue. And we had a daughter born to us, who is strong, okay. I'm assuming we can't have her inherit. That's fine, we have our um, our wolf child, of course, who is our current heir. So I guess we'll just keep him. And our only ambition available is to amass wealth, so let's do that. We haven't been raiding yet, so I guess we can maybe try and collect some gold that way once we're out of this war. We spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of our prey, but are forced to return empty-handed. I will just admit failure, lose a little prestige. Not a big deal. Uh, I think we can actually send... 250 troops down here. Oh no, right, of course we don't have enough men to continue the siege if we do that. That's fine. My wife has asked me to get rid of one of my courtiers whom she finds mighty annoying. On one hand, Svoboda might not be happy if I refuse her request, but if I fire the annoying man, maybe people will feel my wife has too much influence over my actions. So we would fire our spy master. Hmm. I don't know, I think we'll just keep our spy master. He's not too unhappy with me, though she did try to kill our heir. Which I did not appreciate. I was just about to leave Sky by the watering hole when Bugadai's horse reached out and bit him. Our vassal uh, can here. So we can have the beast killed, which will make him hate me, or we can give up 30 prestige to keep him cated. Um, we'll just lose the 30 prestige, I think that's okay. He already doesn't really like me, because he wants more land. I think we might just give him the new county we're going to get here. Since I assume that would put us even more over our land limit, or whatever the deal is here. So his army is headed over here. I think we're going to get to... 100 pretty soon anyway, either thanks to ticking war score from holding our target county or taking this siege of this castle that is mysteriously built in this county. I wonder if uh, once we eventually take this county whether we can get rid of this and turn it into grazing land or whether it's just stuck there forever. Because, of course, as nomadic characters, we hate castles, they're stupid. We don't like battlements or crenellations or any of that kind of stuff. Barbicans. Uh, so we can enforce demands here, we gain the county, we gain prestige, we gain piety and moral authority, so... There we go. Another victorious war. We'll take our troops back into our lands and... We will probably be able to grant this county to this guy. What county is this? Okay. So let's see if this gets rid of his desire for more land. Apparently not, he wants another one. But it should at least improve his opinion. Okay, we lost our court chaplain. We will appoint a new one. I guess we don't have uh, much in the way of religious scholars in our realm, so we'll appoint you. And I guess we need to appoint a new commander. Oh wow, 28. Yes please, okay. 
Um, actually... I think uh, you might be better than one of our other commanders. How do we get back to the... There we go, minor titles interface. Uh, yes, we can fire this guy. Resign commander. And then we can appoint you as commander, which may improve your opinion. Plus 10, okay, good. So I guess we probably just have to hand him out another county where he is going to be permanently upset with us. I don't know if there's a huge penalty to not doing that. It's the minus 20 clan sentiment, probably. Anyway, we'll saddle our horse and look for the Great White Bear again. Alright, I guess I'll give him this county also. We'll see what happens. We do still stand to lose the Kaganet title. But we have no negative sentiment here, which I guess is good. He has a lower population, okay. You have gathered your followers and your hunting dogs, you have saddled your horse and prepared your weapons. Let's set out and hunt the Great White Boar. Uh, we do have manpower available, so we could build some more hordes. Spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but to no avail, you find plenty of bugs, snakes, and riding sores, however, so we'll maybe become stressed and or wrath. We became stressed, which is bad, but we have health bonuses of various kinds, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. Maybe next time we'll catch our prey. Well, we'll see. Alright, well, we also, now that we are not doing anything else, have a chance to hold war games finally, I think. So this was going to cost us 30 gold and give us some extra monthly prestige. We decided to organize a great competition in martial skills, inviting warriors from across the realm to display their prowess with horse, bow, and sword. It will be a great contest. Um, I do also want to check on the military strength of our other neighbours here, who we now border. They are Manichaean, a Zoroastrian heresy. He has 2,250, which is exactly what we have. So if we were to build a few more wards, we could overtake him. Warriors have come to your court from afar, gathering for the great war games. The impatient stomping of horses accompanies the excited cries from the spectators. As the participants salute you, you give the signal for the contest to begin. The best warrior shall win. Our courtier Subutai, with the 28 martial score, uh, strong and quick, wow, okay, has won the war games, his martial skills unmatched, a worthy winner. So he gains 200 prestige, 30 gold, and we get extra vassal opinion for five years. Okay, good. Alright, so we will have a truce with our southern neighbours and therefore can't go to war with them just yet. So if we are going to want to go to war, it'll have to be with this guy, but I think we should wait until we have a more substantial advantage over him. So for now I think we'll just build a couple more hordes and let them reinforce. Uh, maybe we'll build some of the slightly better ones for gold. We actually are making one gold a month, which is not too bad. Yeah, I guess we'll create two light horse archers. It's a hundred gold, so not cheap. But they should be higher quality troops. I don't feel too well, something is wrong with me. We are becoming ill, which in combination with stress is a little worrying. But we do have, as mentioned, many health bonuses, so I'm not too concerned about dying immediately. Uh, 
And let's take another look at our potential upgrades here. Do any of them improve our income? Composite bow, archer attack plus 10% and horse archer offensive plus 10%. That seems good. Uh, that does increase nomad tax. Alright, well I guess um, we will still hold off on going to war, but maybe we'll try to raid our neighbours to the south. That's something we haven't done yet, yet either. And our wolf child needs educating. We'll of course take care of that personally. Wouldn't trust anyone else to educate our eldest son and heir. I'm assuming that we have more than enough troops to take on whatever he has at this point. We'll toggle leader and head down here. I woke this morning feeling much better. It seems that my illness has passed, so we are no longer ill. Great news. And I guess we'll just stay here and loot our share of the zero gold that's in this county. Hmm. Every time my son Alkidai meets a stranger, he looks like he might faint. He'll say that shyness is a terrible curse when talk, talk with him and maybe make him gregarious. We didn't, but he's not shy. And my wife is pregnant again, okay. So I don't know if we can actually loot any gold at all from him since there is zero in this county. A new bird has arrived to the Mew, and a new book on the art of writing poetry is in the library. So we can go for a hunt or start reading the book. While we are actually more interested... Actually, no, we're equally interested in matters of learning and martial prowess, so I guess we'll take the falconite for a hunt. Rabbit after rabbit was caught, killed, and brought to me by my new bird. So we get one diplomacy and become an inspiring falconer. Sounds good. Looks like he is under attack by some of his neighbors right now. Liberation of Kamul. Liberation of Kamul. Kind of uh, working at cross purposes there. And uh, this, I guess, is the Duchy of Kamul? So he may lose a county or two. We'll see. My friend became aghast when I told him that I had sent the miller's boy to a nearby city with my finest stallion. You will never see that horse again, he said, utterly convinced. But he was wrong, of course, so he gained piety. Okay. Cool story. And the thing is, I think that we can only raid neighboring counties, so... This is not neighboring. We'll go there anyway and see what happens. This guy claims he would be a better marshal than Temujin. Which he would be slightly. Alright. You're the marshal. Guess we need to appoint a new commander. It's gonna be Temujin. And not loot. Does not border the realm of the unit's owner. Okay. That's pretty pretty much what I thought. So I guess we're pretty limited in our looting options here. That's fine though. I guess we could actually loot this guy since he is a different religion now that I think about it. I thought he was Tengri, but he is Manichaean. Though he has no holdings here either, and there's zero gold, so maybe we and actually gain anything out of that either. Okay, we have another daughter. Not strong this time. But if this guy is now having a bad time, thanks to his defensive wars, 
would be a good opportunity to attack him, if only we did not have a truce. This guy claims he would be a better spy master. Uh, we'll say no, because I want to make sure he's available to be a commander. He'll lose prestige and like us a little worse, but he'll get over it. We'll give him an honorary title as well. Sure, he can be Churby, which is the leader of the Keshig, the Imperial Guard of the Mongol Empire. They are charged with the protection of the Empire's most important nobility, and the position as their commander is a very prestigious one. All right then. Congratulations. And we're off to hunt the Great White Bear again, so saddle my horse. My son is a charitable little rascal. He just gave his newest toy to the smith's son. Yeah, he can gain one diplomacy and become charitable. That is okay by me. The new bird is almost too perfect. I enjoy every hunt with her. And the cook has trouble finding new recipes for a rabbit. I'm a falconer, so we can gain the trade falconer, which I think is new. At least I don't remember ever seeing it before. Plus one diplomacy and same trait opinion. Yeah, sounds good. We've gathered our followers and hunting dogs and saddle our horses. And we're off to hunt the bear again. I think we might change our focus after this, since we are able to at this point. Scaring the countryside for your prey, you come upon a lone rider as you strike up conversation. It turns out he also hunts the same great animal that you are after. His lack of success thus far seems to match yours, but he invites you to talk and share experiences. We get a courtier named No Guy at our court. There he is. A decent diplomacy, actually. I guess he's probably better than our Chancellor. Congratulations, Snow Guy the Hunter. Uh, let's send him to improve clan sentiment, actually, since we now have a vassal clan. Do we not have a better steward than this? We do, but it's this guy who we would like to keep available as a commander. Yeah, that's fine. The River Crossing. Traveling from one of your camps to the next, you come upon a river. Rains have made it swell and the rapids are strong and violent. The way around is too long, however, so you must cross. You watch with concern as the party gingerly begins to descend into the churning waters. Svoboda, your wife, crosses riding your favorite horse. I don't like the sound of this. You're watching the bank as it suddenly happens. Svoboda loses control in the strong rapids and falls off the horse as it loses its footing. And both of them are grabbed by the strong current. You realize that you only have a moment to react before they are swept away, and you cannot save them both. So, do we want to save Svoboda or save Sky, our beloved horse? Um. Well, we do like horses a lot. We are a horse lord. I'm sorry, Svoboda. We must save our beloved horse. <laughs> She gave us some healthy children. We'll remember her fondly. We'll reminisce with her, with our best friend Sky in his comfortable stable. We could get married again, though, of course. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll just choose a random character. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, actually, it does matter, because we don't want to lose 400 prestige. Maybe we'll just stay unmarried for the moment. We do have an heir and a backup heir, so it's not a huge deal. We could potentially just take concubines if we do need to have more children. Okay, this guy is at 2,250, so we do have a few more troops than him, and we have the available manpower to build more. Okay, so our upkeep for the existing hordes that we have is costing us 0.5 prestige. And I think we're also spending some gold for upkeep also. 
which makes sense. And we could afford to spend more gold on upkeep, but I think we'll just build the prestige units, even though they're worse. I think two more is probably going to be okay for the moment. I don't know if there's any disadvantage to building just as many as you can, other than, of course, the upkeep. But if it's just prestige, that seems pretty easy to keep up with. Oh, maybe not, actually, because we're now negative. My trusted Chancellor Nogai reports success from the clan of Sartak. Their elders now like the Narant Setseg a lot better. Okay, so they got extra clan sentiment for five years. Or his opinion goes up. Or both. Propaganda effort plus 20. Either way, sounds good. So I think we're maybe in a position to consider going to war with this guy now, but it is going to have to wait until the next episode because we're just about out of time for now. So thanks for watching, and join me again then.